watch that. Shoot, let's talk about Iran though. I got friggin' sidetracked. So, um, the first, I mean, we could watch Richard Medhurst's video. Um, it's very pretty much basic. Just gives you like what's been going on. We know um, what ha or what the event was um, that that triggered these protests. Um, and then how the U S is, is going to try and use it for their own interests. Right. So like, I think I'll basically give a disclaimer before we start talking about this. Um, but nobody here is saying like, you know, we defend the morality police or whatever. We think that the Islamic revolution in Iran is equivalent to a socialist revolution, right? We've always at Midwestern Marx, especially said, and, and most anti-imperialist socialists say this, right? They have criticisms of Iran, right? They don't act like Iran is just, you know, a socialist or communist country um, the same way China is. But Iran is opposed to the U.S. 70% of Iran's industry and banks are owned by the state, by the government, which means Western multinationals don't get to touch them. Uh, the U.S. holds deadly sanctions on Iran, which keep people in malnutrition and kill like 40,000 people a year, I believe the estimates are. Um, Iran is a major trade partner of Venezuela. Um, they've foregone the U.S. embargo. One time they sent Venezuela oil uh, despite the U.S. sanctions, prevent, trying to prevent countries from sending Venezuela oil. And the U.S. stole it, stole four tankers of oil, brought it back to Houston and gave it away to Western companies. Um, so, you know, despite the fact that Iran is not socialist, they are absolutely opposed to the U.S., right? They are absolutely part of the anti-U.S. empire uh, global alliance that's sort of forming, mostly because their resources, you know, are, are being used to develop themselves rather than, um, rather than, you know, being exploited by Western multinationals. Okay, so that means we support Iran's sovereignty. We support, you know, uh, them bringing people out of poverty, what they're doing developmentally with their economy. Um, and we do not support U.S. efforts to overthrow Iran. We don't support the U.S. efforts to take an internal conflict in Iran or take real protests in Iran um, and turn them into regime change, uh, turn them into a violent separatist movement that uh, destroys the revolution and um, uh, destroys democracy and development and all these things. Uh, obviously, that's not what we support. But of course, you can still criticize the Iranian regime. You can criticize the morality police. Uh, you can definitely criticize the killing of this uh, Iranian girl that sparked these protests. Um, but just keep in mind, the U.S. is going to use any kind of event they can in Iran to foment regime change. Right. And just don't be so naive to think that because something legitimate happened in Iran, something legitimately worth being concerned about happened in Iran, that all of a sudden the U.S. cares so deeply about Iran. Oh, we just want to help now, Iran. We we're going to bring you human rights, just like we were doing with our sanctions that killed 40,000 of you per year. You know, we're going to bring you human rights because one person died. Um, and, and you know, or, I mean, the, the Iranian regime kills one person. Now the U.S. is going to come and overthrow your government, despite the fact that we've killed 40,000 of you with our sanctions per year. Um, right. The U.S. doesn't care about Iran. The U.S. is looking out for their own interests and they'll use anything real on the ground that they can to escalate it into a separatist movement. Um, so that's my take on it so far. That's what I think the U.S. is trying to do. Um, and our good buddy, Ramiro Sebastian Funes, one of the greatest journalists, content makers, socialists of our time, uh, did this awesome interview with, oh shoot, I don't have the name of her yet. It's over here. Um, Marzi Hashemi, a U.S. journalist who is currently living and working in Iran. She was born in New Orleans and studied journalism at Louisiana State University, LSU. Um, I wonder if she met Joe Burrow. Uh, she has been in broadcast journalism for over 30 years. Currently, she hosts a weekly television program called Hidden Files and works as a producer. She was a senior anchor for Press TV for 12 years. She has made documentaries, mostly concentrating on the situation of black people in the United States. So that is who our comrade Ramiro is interviewing here about Iran. Um, and about the recent conflict in Iran. Let's see what she has to say. That the United States and others, they don't give a damn about <laughs> an Iranian woman dying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course. Because we have had and we have major sanctions against each, against 
against us. I mean, I, I did an interview about two months ago, and I talked to these individuals who have these rare diseases and everything. Um, it's a, a EB, it's called the butterfly uh, disease. And these people have this very, very sensitive skin, and they have to get the special um, bandage or wrap. Look at Ramiro. He's just talking to her on the phone and holding the phone up to his mic. This man is going to get attacked by the CIA. He's just finding ways to talk to anti-imperialists and connect various anti-imperialists all around the globe. It doesn't matter how much, you know, regime change propaganda is going on about a certain issue. Ramiro is not afraid to talk about it. He doesn't care what you say about him. Um, this man is a legend. I love Ramiro. Rapping or otherwise their skin peels. They have to do this two or three times a day. There's one company, a Swedish company, that actually sells this, these, uh, these uh, bandages um, or wrappings. Uh, the United States won't let that Swedish company sell to Iran. Mm. We have people dying every day. That's just one. And a perfect example of how Scandinavian countries like Sweden, these wonderful social democracies that... Um, people like Kyle Kalinske will call, I don't know if Kyle Kalinske calls them socialist, actually. He probably calls them capitalist, but that some people will call socialist. Um, they aid imperialism by helping the U S with their embargoes, helping the U S with their interventions, uh, Swedish banks refusing to give bandages to Iranian people, very similar to the Swiss, uh, banks and the banks in Switzerland who wouldn't help Cuba, uh, who wouldn't allow Cuba to make payment for ventilators, medical ventilators they needed. Um, or the Scandinavian banks who wouldn't let Venezuela make their COVAX payment. They let Venezuela pay for 90% of their uh, COVID vaccines and then prevented them from paying the final 10% so that they could keep all the money that Venezuela paid without ever sending them the vaccines themselves, using the pandemic to try and kill people and foment regime change. Of these diseases. <laughs> I had never. It is unbelievable. I love your intro, Romero. I'm just trying to avoid copyright. That's all. Romero, I have seen. It is unbelievable. Like, if I had never come to Iran and never lived in Iran, I would imagine that this would be a country. And I'd love to hear from your viewers and stuff, you know, what, what their first image comes to their mind when they hear Iran. Um, because they have created this negative image over the four decades of being a backwards place um, that uh, people are repressed, um, you know, just cut off from modernity, cut off from the world. And it's interesting because when people have come here, they either just visiting or um, been invited to various conferences, they're shocked. They're absolutely stunned. I mean, I had one person once um, prior to getting here was saying, like, do you guys have, do you guys have electricity? <laughs> you live in, like, what oh kind of God. houses do you live in? I'm like, do you know how old this civilization is over here? That's so interesting. Iranian people are stunned by what Americans think of them, by how ignorant Americans are about Iranian society and how developed they are and the fact that they have electricity, which... Derek Ford told us a very, very similar thing about Korea. He said he would tell people in not just North Korea, but he would tell people in South Korea the kind of stuff that the Americans believe about the North. And South Koreans were like, you guys really believe that shit? Like, you believe the stuff that they print in the tabloids? You know, it'd be like Americans looking at People magazine, you know, these uh, tabloid magazines reporting on celebrities' love lives. And being like, you know, everything in here is fact. This is all truthful. And, and People Magazine loves talking about Kim Jong-un. They'll publish stories like, Kim Jong-un makes everyone in the country get the same haircut as him. And South Koreans are like, Americans really believe this shit? Like, what? <laughs> we are the most propagandized country in the world. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So on the one hand, they paint a picture uh, oh, the country that's going after, you know, uh, nuclear bombs. And OK, so they have a sophistication to deal with nukes, you're saying. On the other hand, we have people who have an image of, oh, my God, you I mean, these people are living in the desert, right? They have nothing. So this is how they create. And, and we know, I mean, if we 
look at the images from so many countries that they try to create. First of all, they work on that part of it, and then they can say whatever they want about it, because unfortunately the average person will accept it because they've been demonized for so long. Beautifully said, and uh, just as uh, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Erica Kane, says in the chat, yes, decades of propaganda to validate the decades of sanctions. And I totally agree with you, uh, Marcia. There's so much propaganda and nonsense about Iran. Everything that the U.S. and Israel accuses Iran of is actually true about the U.S.-backed, Western-backed entities like Saudi Arabia and even the U.S. itself in terms of detention, having the largest prison population in the world, Israel spying and censoring people. So it's just a, it's crazy to see that. It's infuriating. And honestly, it's been so frustrating these past few days, just getting into so many debates with people, even people who consider themselves anti-imperialist or left or progressive yes. who are saying, yes. oh, well, you know, we have to, this is a grassroots uprising. Okay, so what the U.S. and the Western powers are supporting it, you know, um, this is, you know, neither Tehran nor Washington. And, uh, you know, as somebody who has been victim to kidnapped by the U.S. government, by the U.S. state, who has been in, detained illegally by the U.S. government, um, you know, what is your perspective about what's going on? First of all, give us a rundown of what exactly happened, uh, the case of uh, Masa Amini, uh, what exactly happened and, and, and how... Um, my uh, phone on tick my phone just like overheated. It was like super hot, so that's why we're not live on TikTok anymore. If people were wondering, um, but <laughs> um, this is so so true. These these people who are saying you know neither Tehran nor Washington. Okay, that's naive though, right? You don't have like I was saying at the beginning. I don't support the morality police, right? Or um, I'm a socialist. I'd rather have a socialist revolution versus an Islamic revolution. Um. But still support Iran's sovereign, sovereignty and their economic development and everything like that. And understanding that the U.S. is going to take, you know, any little thing on the ground, any, you know, sense of anger towards the regime or discontent with the regime. And they're going to try and push, push for color revolution or push for a coup uh, for their own interests, for their own economic interests, to destroy Iran's economic development, destroy Iran's sovereignty. And, and be able to pillage Iran and allow Western multinationals to pillage the country like they've done to Iraq. I mean, that's what the U.S. has wanted to do in Iran for years. So, you know, when it comes to these protests, you can say neither the U.S. nor Tehran, sure. But the U.S. is using what may be legitimate protests to try and overthrow Tehran, right? So if you just say, um, you know, I support the protests, the protests are good, two thumbs up to the protests. But I don't support the U.S. empire or the Iranian government. Well, by default, you're supporting the U.S. empire, right? Because the U.S. empire is going to lie about whatever is going on on the ground. They're going to funnel a bunch of money in and or arms and, and try and um, turn it into a violent color revolution, try and get separatist groups um, or extremist groups to take power of the, the protests and, and turn it into a violent revolution, exactly like they did with Euromaidan in Ukraine. You know, there were legitimate protests at first and then through millions of dollars from the NED and NGOs funneled into groups like the Azov Battalion and Right Sector, Euromaidan was turned into a violent coup. That's exactly what the U.S. is trying to do. So, you know, by saying neither the U.S. nor Iran and then saying, but I support these protests, you know, if you're not giving that added context, if you're not explaining what the U.S. is trying to do with these protests, you're essentially just supporting the U.S. State Department then, which is why it's super hard to be an anti-imperialist when the U.S. is actually trying to overthrow a country because they'll make you seem like a piece of shit. They'll be like, oh, this person doesn't care about the protests. They don't care about feminism. They don't care about this girl who was killed by the Iranian police. Like, no, we do. We just don't want the U.S. to use that to overthrow Iran and kill millions of people like they did in Iraq because that's a whole lot worse. How has the Western imperialist powers been taking advantage of the situation? Right. It's been an amazing uh, situation. I mean, because I've seen, um, of course, I've been in Iran a while now, and I've seen many attempts, actually, 
um, to try to overthrow this government um, or try to get the people to turn against the government. And I have to say, this is the, I think the... Hey, Cobra Commander, it's you. <laughs> we got double Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander is everywhere. Yadi that 25 new Arab Spring update just dropped. That's such this is such a funny comment and such a true comment. Which, yeah, like I said, we have the Iraq example, an example of the US trying to overthrow a country for human rights and killing millions of people and pillaging their resources. But just look at Libya and Syria, where the US used the internet. The internet and online communication was basically the focal point of these color revolutions of massing together these uh, opposition coalitions, which are basically just a bunch of right-wing terrorist US or pro-U.S. extremist groups in Libya and Syria that the U.S. was able to weld together into a coalition of rebels, um, largely using the Internet, you know, largely using um, mass communication or forms of mass communication. It's exactly what they're trying to do um, with Iran most coordinated one that I have seen um, on so many levels, exactly the point that you just made. Um, we've had traditional people who are traditionally anti-imperialist um, fall for this one this time around. What happened with Masa Amini? Um, she was detained. She was detained. Yes, we do have laws in Iran um, that women and men should dress conservatively mm -hmm. and the women should wear a scarf what we've been seeing over especially since the, the with rohani government the last four years basically what we had seen was that i mean some women wear it some women don't so that's where we were and are um you see some women they may have it on their shoulder or not wear it at all and then you'll see others who are fully covered and that's how we have been living with each other and whatever um, I've actually read a decent amount about this. I had, for whatever reason, in high school, we had like a whole unit on Iran in English class. We learned about Iran or like we had to pick a country or something. And I picked Iran because I loved their wrestling team and did a bunch of research into their wrestling team. But yeah, I mean, forever, the more traditional or more, you know, I, I wouldn't say more religious, but the more fundamentalist, I guess, is the word. But I don't want to say more devout, but whatever. The the more hardline um, Muslim women would wear their scarf covering up all their hair, every little bit of their hair. And then, the, you know, more progressive ones are the ones who um, were critical of the government or um, ones who are critical of the headscarf or the hijab or, you know, maybe just critical of the hijab that covers all the hair, the rules surrounding the hijab or whatever. They would show some of their hair. Right. They would let some of their hair out as like a form of protest is what I read. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. I might be wrong about that. It's definitely not. I'm definitely not an expert in hijabs, but I thought that Iranian women were have been allowed to show their hair for a long time. Um, but we'll see what what she says. Um, so, um, you know, I, I saw different signs uh, within the last year that we were probably going to be targeted and the women would be used for this. And I mean, this is always um, something that we see in different places that they, that the imperialists use. So um, when Masa Amini, we, we heard that she had been arrested and the first things that came out like in social media was that this woman had been arrested. She had been beaten to death. Okay, then we find out that she, you know, she had not died. She was in a coma. And then it was, um, you know, that she had been um, just just totally abused and so many different things. And then um, the CCTV cameras, uh, the footage was released. And we see this woman in this class. And so what they do, they take them in class and like, okay, so these are the reasons why, you know, this is the law. You should dress conservatively. Um and this type of thing. So she's in this classroom setting and she's sitting down and um, and then she gets up and she talks to, um, I guess, one of the teacher's guards, whatever you want to call her. And she's talking. And I, I don't know if you guys have seen the video. I don't even know if they show the yeah. video over there. Mm -hmm. um, 
Have y'all seen the video? I don't think we played it on this show. I don't know. Richard Medhurst posted the video. I'll try and pull it up here while we listen so I can show it to y'all. Um, I have seen the video once or twice. Okay. And, and then she passes out. Well, what we have found out, I mean, maybe from the stress of being uh, detained, it could have an effect. I'm not saying it could not have. Um, but we do know that she had the previous medical problems. Um, and this, this whole thing is being investigated, let me say. I mean, right after this happened, even the president of the country said um, it has to be thoroughly investigated. And if we see that there's, if there's a problem, if someone caused this, whatever. It was where Pilgrim in Ramiro's comments there. Sorry, I keep stopping it because I keep seeing people from our audience in Ramiro's comments. What up, where Pilgrim? A lot of crossover between our audiences investigated and if we see that there's if there's a problem if someone caused this whatever then they will be prosecuted accordingly so this is okay let me just say that situations happen in, in many countries um as far as dealing with police or whatever but the thing is is that when it happens anything happens in iran mm. all of a sudden it becomes systemic everyone yep. i mean you know the u.s uh, you can you can shoot you know a black guy 80 times and who has done nothing or whatever, but okay, but you know, you don't question the overall system. It's that let's just get justice in this particular case. Absolutely. They'll always question the overall system when it's a country they want to destroy. Um, but never when it's the US. They'll never question capitalism. Maybe capitalism and the prison industrial complex have something to do with all these police murders. Maybe the fact that the police are militarized and that companies are making tons and tons of money off of keeping the prisons filled with bodies, which is why we've perpetrated the drug war. Maybe this has something to do with the violent police. No, of course not. We can't look systemically when it comes to the U.S. Only Iran is authoritarian. Um, so here's the video. Uh, I might go refill my. Sorry, I muted myself. I might go refill my water while I play this. We're referring to if it was her hijab or something else that she was wearing, but they released the CCTV footage. So I'm going to show you the footage. This is what they put out. Okay. So they've, they've circled her in red. Right. And she gets up and then you'll see in a moment, she suddenly collapses for no reason. I, I don't understand what, what, what happened there exactly, but. Yeah, you can see they're, 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 uh, you know, they're, telling her off because of her clothing and then she she's feeling physically unwell and collapses so that alone to me leads me to believe there's more to this story than they're telling okay let me show you the rest of the footage there's some more footage i don't know if you guys have seen this it's when she's being taken away taken away in an ambulance yeah you can see her being carried here So she's being carried away and then she's put into an ambulance and that's that's all we have. That's it. Now, my understanding, and I've seen this in many, many outlets, is that the, the proof, the quote unquote evidence that she was beaten by the police comes from her father. Her father said that Mahza and his son were together and uh they were both beaten that's what he's saying okay so miss amini's father said that he was not allowed by authorities to see all of her body after it been wrapped for burial and just her face and feet were visible he said there were bruises on her feet and he asked doctors to examine it but he never heard back from them and there's basically this back and forth going on where you have the um the uh, director, so this is Tehran's director of forensic medicine, he's saying that she had pre-existing health issues and her father responding by saying, no, that's not true. She's, she's never been to a hospital in the last 22 years. That's basically what they've been saying. Also, the fact that um, uh, the Iranian health officials are saying she had an operation on a brain tumor or something when she was eight years old. So I don't know whether either of these things are true. I'm just telling you what both sides are saying, what her family are saying and what the Iranian government are saying. What I have in front of me, what I've just shown to you, all we have is this video, okay? All we have is this video of her collapsing before she's taken anywhere. So you guys explain that to me. 
explain to me why if she was beaten why did she collapse are those two things related maybe both are true but for the moment we only have the video now in in response i'm just going to show you some of these these protests it's very strange and you know again like i'm still coming at this from the standpoint like you can be definitely critical of the police the iranian morality police um but it is very strange and of course you know people call you a conspiracy theorist if you question these things at all you know if you're even critical of these narratives at all but we have things like the naira testimony you know where the u.s just straight up lied straight up fabricated evidence um of human rights abuses uh to justify the gulf war a regime change operation so you know there is precedence for that but I'm, I'm definitely not saying like this was fake or something like the event was fake um i imagine it was probably uh real and like you said like uh the the last lady on ramiro's show said um even the president of iran said this is very strange and needs to be investigated and it does um but the U.S. is obviously going to try and, um, you know, whatever the case may be with the event, you know, whatever the details of the event were, the U.S. is going to try and use it for their own interests. They're going to try and use it for regime change. And um, Sam, or Crazy Hayes, I don't know if you were here earlier um, in the stream earlier when we were talking about uh, Ramiro's video um, or doing the introduction uh, to this segment on Iran. Um, but we were saying it's okay to criticize the morality police, right? It's okay to criticize the Islamic revolution. Um, it's okay to criticize things like that. But, you know, if you just say, I support these protests, full stop, um, which is you're saying here, we can, we should fix our systems, but th that doesn't mean we can't support women rising up for the right to wear, not wear a piece of clothing. If you just support the women rising up, right, just the protests, you're going to end up supporting the U.S. State Department because whatever protests are going on, whatever real grassroots discontent is going on, the U.S. is going to throw arms at I mean, maybe not arms, but they're going to throw money at it. They're going to throw propaganda at it. They're going to throw every regime change method, every hybrid war method in the book at it to try and inflame it into a color revolution, to try and inflame it into a coup. So if you're just saying, you know, I support the protests with two thumbs up without criticizing what the U.S. is going to do, you're going to end up supporting protests that that escalate similar to Euromaidan um, or, or someone made the Arab Spring comparison earlier, you know, where all these social Democrats and all these leftists in the U.S. were saying, oh, freedom for Syria and Libya, freedom from the dictators Assad and, and Gaddafi. And what it really was, was the U.S. State Department um, backing terrorists and backing separatists and backing extremists and having them pretend to be fighting for human rights, having them pretend to be freedom loving rebels. And it's thrown the countries into chaos. Obviously, Libya went from one of the most prosperous countries in Africa to a country torn apart by civil war with an open air slave market. Um, in Syria, the war is winding down, but, you know, it's been absolute chaos and they've had so much infrastructure destroyed. Um, and these rebel coalitions backed by the U.S. are basically just uh, an amalgamation of terrorist extremist groups who the U.S. welded together to foment regime change. Um, or you have the Euromaidan protests, which started, you know, as legitimate protests in Ukraine. Then the U.S. funnels a bunch of money and arms into groups like Right Sector and the Azov Battalion. And they turn these legitimate protests into a right wing violent color revolution where they're burning trade unionists alive. Right. So if you just give the protest two thumbs up and you don't question the U.S. narrative and you just say, yes, every protest you see, whether it's being influenced by the State Department or not, you know, these are all just women protesting their rights. This is all just about human rights. Um, you're inadvertently, you know, lending credence to the U.S. State Department narrative. You have to point these things out. We have to point out that the U.S. doesn't care about Iran. We have to point out the U.S. history of turning legitimate grievances into right-wing, violent, undemocratic separatist movements um, and regime change efforts. Um, it would be extremely naive, right, to look at the way that the U.S. media is just going, Iran, 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 protest, 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 overthrow the government, hate the Iranian government. Um, the way that they're doing that right now and just think, you know, that, that every protest we see or that the U.S. State Department's support for these protests is all just about human rights.
The U.S. State Department never supports human rights. The U.S. State Department never cares about Muslim people. The U.S. State Department has never cared about Muslim women, um, whether they're oppressed by the Iranian government or not. And, and now is no different. Um, so, yeah. That's why I gave a disclaimer before uh, before we started talking about this. But I don't know if I don't know if you were here for that part of the stream. This is what people have been doing in the streets. So you have women like cutting off their hair in, in this example. You've had other women ripping off their um, headscarves, their hijab uh, in protest and saying that, you know, it's not just about her being killed. The whole thing has to go because. She was detained by morality police, so their, their logic is that not only the hijab has to go, the whole government has to go. This whole Islamic um, republic has to go. Now, what does that sound like to you? Who does that sound like to you? That sounds like Israel. That sounds like the United States. That sounds like everyone who does not like Iran for various reasons. So you, you have people that are really like dying for an opportunity to jump into Iran's internal politics. And this is one of them. It's like with Syria, when you had the war starting in Syria in 2011, you know, the, the original claims, what were they? You had people protesting and they were killed by the government, right? And then it went from that, this claim, to, hey, let's give weapons to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So a boy or a woman or someone. Exactly what I said. I forgot that Medhurst brought that up. It's exactly what I said with the Arab Spring, right? Hey, don't you care about human rights? Don't you care about human rights? These guys are protesting their evil, big, bad government. They're protesting evil Gaddafi and evil Assad. Don't you care about them? We need to give a bunch of money and weapons to Al Qaeda so they can fight Assad and Gaddafi. <laughs> we need to fund the rebel coalitions made up of a bunch of Saudi Arabia backed Sunni extremist groups um, who behead people. That that's how we can support human rights and democracy. And insane. Insane. Press TV got banned in the EU due to serial coverage. That's crazy. And I imagine, I mean, that's crazy how much censorship is going on in the EU. Just the stuff that I mean in, in Europe that you've been talking about uh during this um during this stream. And I feel like that's the direction the US wants to go now. Right. When you have because you have British journalists like Paul Mason um, arguing that the gray zone needs to be banned and working together with U.S. State Department operatives and British State Department operatives and various private interests to try and ban the gray zone. Very similar outlet to Press TV, who exposed the U.S. Um, proxy war on Syria and, and the U.S. dirty war, covert war on Syria. Um, every step of the way. The U.S. would love to ban them the same way Europe has banned various outlets. Um, so I wonder if they're using the EU as a model for how they want to uh, start censoring our speech. 